good morning good afternoon good evening from whichever part of the continents you are in welcome back welcome to adonai's kingdom the channel we talk about the most high god the holy one of israel who was who is and who is to be the holy of holies my name is Awaudi, the messenger and welcome 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 let's start with a word of prayer father i want to thank you and bless you on this beautiful magnificent day thank you for the gift of life gift of the healthy living and of being a good provider in our wallets i thank you for my viewers so father use me as an oracle for your message for your word let it enter into everyone's car vehicles wherever they might might be their homes in clubs in the streets whoever listens to it let him get inside deep inside his, his heart not only on his he ears holy spirit we welcome you and bless my viewers mightily in yeshua's mighty name amen and amen and amen well guys here we are again and a new week new vibes new messages from the most high god and uh today we are going straight to the word and uh we are in shoftim 19 that's judges chapter number 19 and judges 19 it's got uh it's quite a long one it's got 30 verses but we'll just go through them quickly so that we understand i want you to have a glimpse of what's what message i was given and the title is a levite and his concubine levites as we know and for those who don't know they were the judges it's like they were the priests in israel even today we still have levites in israel i mean it's like they mediate they were used to mediate between god and the people of israel so yeah let's jump into it now i'll go from verse 1 to 10 quickly and it was in those days when there was no king in israel that there was a levite man dwelling by the edge of the mountain of ephraim who took for himself a concubine from bethlehem bethlehem in judah that's bethlehem you know where jesus comes from came from <clears throat> if you see in the new testament okay and his concubine turned away from him and went from him to her father's house to bethlehem of judah and she was there for a period of four months these first two verses we are being told and in those days there was no king in israel since they since there was no king in israel it means they didn't recognize anyone to rule over them meaning if you don't have a leader it's like there are no laws people did what they was right in their sight so there was no king in israel and they refused to recognize yahweh the lord god as their king as their father okay let's carry on in verse 3 and her husband arose and went after her this lady went back to her parents the hus husband followed to persuade her to return and his servant was with him and a team of donkeys and she brought him into her father's house when the father of the girl saw him he rejoiced to meet him the father was happy to see the son so here we don't know whether he, he was happy because he wanted the daughter to go away or let's carry on and his father-in-law the girl's father kept him 
and he abode with him for three days, and they ate and drank and lodged there. And it was on the fourth day that they arose early in the morning, and he rose, he rose up to depart, and the girl's father said to his son-in-law, Refresh yourself with a morsel of bread, and afterward you shall depart. And they sat down, both of them ate together, and they drank, and the girl's father said to the man, Accept now and lodge, and let your heart be content. Still the father wants to keep the son-in-law. It's like maybe he wanted to know what really transpired in between them to the point that the girl had to run away. You know, as a parent, as an elder, you have to listen to both sides of the story. If you are not contented with it, you have to review and review and listen to it again and again so that you can come to your judgment. Okay. Verse 7, And the man rose up to depart, but his father-in-law urged him, and he returned and lodged there. Verse 8, And he arose early in the morning on the fifth day to depart, and the father's girl said, Refresh yourselves now, and they tarried until the day declined, and they both ate. The fifth day, wow. Even if it's being a visiting somebody. And the man rose up to depart. He, his concubine, and his servant, and his father-in-law, and the girl's and the girl's father said to him, Behold now, the day has weakened again to set. Lodge now. Now this is the sixth day. Behold, it is in the resting part of the day. Lodge here, and your heart will be content, and you will arise early on your way and go to your dwelling place. But the man did not want to lodge. So he arose and departed and came over against Jebus, which was in Jerusalem, and was and with him was a team of saddled donkeys, he and his concubine. So after he went, took his wife, after almost six to seven days, he decided now is enough is enough. He told his father in law, Papa, I'm going. Whatever God plans, I'll go with it, but I can't lodge anymore. Because, yeah, you, we can't be living in people's houses forever. Even things, even if things are tight, you just decide to go. And the funny thing is, you know, there are some verses which talk of uh, that the woman went home because of infidelity. That she had other men but it's not uh, proven so we are not told what really transpired but anyway you know in uh, marriages these things didn't tend to happen disagreements but later on you come to an agree ag agreement and yeah that's it okay verse 11 they were near Jebus as the sun descended very much and the servant said to his master Come now, let us turn aside to this city of the Jebusites and lodge it in it. Remember, the Jebusites are not Israelites. These are different tribe, a different nation. And his master said to him, We will not turn aside into this city of heathens, nor any of other cities that are not of the children of Israel, but we will we'll journey to Gibeah. And he said to, the, to his servant, Come, let us approach the one of these places, and we will lodge in Gibeah or in Ramoh. And they passed on and went, and the sun set upon them near Gibeah, and belong, which belonged to Benjamin. Uh, the Levite didn't want, want to lodge among the heathens, the unbelievers. I think he was really following the laws of Moses whereby they were told do not mix with other nations. So to, according to him, these other nations were bad. I can't lodge with them. They can't help me. But the servant wanted, you know, sometimes when you're told some things, you have to consider, pray over it, seek the Holy Spirit. Do I lodge? Do I do whatever? Do I venture into this business? Do I be friends with this person? Do I marry this person? 
somebody can tell you but it's good to listen and then you weigh your matter place it bef before god seek for knowledge in such cases because it's late your time is up and you feel like you want to enter into some partnership time is going you have to consider seek the lord first so um, yeah it's good at least to try 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 and with the way don't just decide all, all at once no we go because these guys are heathens god uses these people sometimes in many cases in the bible god used the unbelievers god used people who you don't expect completely to make ways for you to fight your battles and you just sit back and watch and enjoy the fruits of it so sometimes we have to consider let's see what happened when he after he refused from verse 15 and they turned aside there to come and lodge in Gibeah and he came and sat in, in the thoroughfare of the city but no one brought them home to lodge and behold an old man came from his work out of the field at the evening and the man was from the mountain of Ephraim and he resided in Gibeah but the people of the area were Benjamins so you see in verse 15 you find these people he in Gibeah there they were Benjamites they are part of Israelites but nobody wanted to accommodate them how many times have you been let down by people who claim to be children of God and if they are children of God you must be brothers and sisters and they still let you down in business in everything to the point that you start regretting you are like I should have gone I should have gone to go I should have gone for the unbelievers do business with them or people of other faith because if my brothers can do this to me so let's see what happened here that's we are in verse number 16 this old man came and decided to help him out at least there was one person there's always one person who's coming to help 17 and he ra and he raised his eyes and saw the wayfaring man in the thoroughfare of the city and the old man said what where are you going and from where do you come from mm -hmm. and he said to him we are passing from Beth bethlehem of judah to the edge of the mountain of ephraim from there am i and i went until bethlehem or judah and i'm going to the house of the lord and no one takes me home and also there's a straw and uh, and there's a straw and provi pro provender for our donkeys and also bread and wine for myself for your maid servant and for the lad who is with your servants there is there's no want of anything and the old man says peace be to you just tell just let all your needs be upon me but do not lodge in the street this old man knew you know old people elders they see far like the one we say in our african saying an an elder can see far from where he's seated than 20 young men standing on a mountain top but the elder will see far and will understand what's happening in the other side of the valley so this old man knew this place was no good and imagine i can imagine so many people had come they didn't want to help him out and they knew the streets were bad okay and something else you should learn here this guy knew he was among his fellow israelites so he was so com content and comfortable but nobody was ready to give him accommodation and he's among his brothers and sisters strange you can be thinking that you're living among your friends who will be with you in times of trouble but you might be disappointed big time 
sometimes you tend to wonder are these really my friends or brothers whom I rely on whom I think they are supposed to be helping me so it's it's just a scare, crooked world world so that's why and that's why in Adonai's kingdom we talk about the old testament the new testament the world we are living in and the world that's going to come let me take you to matthew the book of matthew chapter 10 the book of matthew 10 and uh, verse 32 mm, matthew 10 32 we are being told here whosoever therefore shall confess me before men him will i confess also before my father which is in heaven that's 32 verse 33 this is our lord yeshua hamashiach speaking he's, he's trying to teach us something here okay verse 33 but whosoever shall deny me before men him will I also de deny before my father which is in heaven you know when you welcome people when you welcome visitors you don't know who you are welcoming somebody in need and you talk of them talk, you know that's sometimes those are the opportunities you will get in talking about the word of god spreading the gospel in the same same matthew chapter number 12 and verse 50 for who, whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother and sister and mother the will of the father is to help the homeless the immigrants i mean the travelers that's the will of our father the lord never will we are being told help anyone those are the rules and regulations of the kingdom. In Matthew 25 and verse 35. 20, chapter number 25. Just a minute. 25 and verse number 35. For I was a, a hungered, hunger, and ye gave me meat i was thirsty and you gave me drink i was a stranger and you took me in these are the same same rules these people in the benjamites they didn't give this stranger any accommodation apart from that one man one old man there's something wrong when there's no hospitality among god's children something seriously is wrong and we must seek ourselves look yourself into the heart ask yourself why is it that you don't have hospitality even even if things are tight are hard at least have a space for hospitality so if you see in verse 21 and this old man he brought him into the house and gave him fodder for the donkeys and they washed their feet and ate and drank a simple old man decided to help them out as they were enjoying themselves and behold the men of the city men of wickedness sorry and the, the men of the city men of wickedness surrounded the house and were beating up the door and they spoke to the man the elderly master of the house saying bring out the man that came to your house so that we may have intimate we, we we may be intimate with him now we know why the old man was telling this Levite priest don't stay in the streets this place is no good just come I'll, I'll give you accommodation see they didn't even stay for long before the men of that city started coming okay and the men the, and the man the master of the house went out of out to them and said to them 
no my brothers do not do not do so wickedly now since this man has come to my house do not commit this disgraceful deed these guys they, they wanted to sodomize this man which is against god's law i mean they wanted to rape this man literally and the guy was just a traveler he didn't do anything to deserve this and then this uh, the old man says here is my virgin daughter and his concubine i will bring them out now and you shall affl afflict them and do with them as you please but to this man do not do this disgraceful act even the the old man also had issues how can you just give your daughter away to be raped by men it's like he was not into him he was not 100 percent perfect in fact even 80 percent yes he helped the these travelers but giving out your children to go and get raped there are other ways to save but the men did not want to listen to him and the men grabbed his concubine and brought her forth and brought her forth to them outside and they were intimate with her they raped the concubine and abused her i mean they brought they, they grabbed the that wife and abused her the entire night until the morning and they sent her away when the day began to dawn uh verse 26 and the woman came the woman came as the morning began and she fell down at the entrance of the man's house where her master was until it was light and her master arose in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to get his way to go his way and behold the woman his concubine was lying after having fallen at the entrance of the house with her hands on the threshold and he said to her arise and let us go i mean how wicked can you be your concubine or girlfriend or wife has been raped and then you just wake up let wake up and we go what sort of man is that that's pure wickedness but no one answered and he took her upon the donkey and the man arose and went to his place and he came to his house and took the wife the knife and took hold of his concubine and cut her into limbs with 12 pieces and he sent her throughout the borders of israel and it came to pass anyone that saw saw it will say there was not happened nor there has been seen anything like this from the day that the children of israel came up from the land of egypt until this day concern yourself about it take counsel and speak that's verse 30 this guy the levite he understood he understood the laws but he didn't follow them you know sometimes you can sacrifice yourself for the sake of your household our lord jesus sacrificed his life for the entire world because if anything there there should have been something that these two men of that house the visitor and the man of the house the old man they could have done something to avert this situation it could it couldn't it couldn't have ended like that you know we learned that we've been told that in verse 22 25 where the levite thought that he thought he was safe among his fellow israelites shock and behold they wanted to rape him and they raped his concubine to death this portion takes us to genesis 19 and verse 5 about lot whereby it was about sodom people being sodomized it it was about sodom and gomorrah where people it happens it was so bad that god had to burn that city down and historians say that sodom and gomorrah the way it was burned down completely and it disappeared 
that's where they say it's a uh, the the dead sea because even i was watching a clip about land around there you find plants are drying they don't prosper the land is dry i mean when things like this happen god tends to punish a nation and you'll you'll see that uh in uh, hosea the book of hosea chapter number 10 hosea uh, hosea chapter number 10 and it's a uh, yeah hosea chapter 10 and verse 9 hosea 10 9 you know, that thing was so distasteful to the point that it's written since the days of Gibeah. That's the one we just read. You have sinned, O Israel. And there you have remained. Did not war overtake the evildoers of Gibeah? It's like they were punished. God punished them. So whatever you do to your fellow human beings, don't think you're going to... You'll enjoy for the next five minutes, but you'll suffer for the rest of your life. In the same same book of Hosea, Hosea chapter nine, chapter nine and verse nine. The prophet, along with me, along with my God, is the watchman over Ephraim. Yet snares await him in all his paths, and hostility in the house of God, in the house of his God. So, this prophet. Is a watchman over Ephraim. The children of God are trying to watch over the cities and nations. Yet hostility, it's all over. It's surrounding the children of God. But brothers and sisters, don't lose hope. Keep on spreading the message. So we learn here that we have to be careful with whom we trust. You know, with our dreams and passions. You see, this old man, okay, he welcomed him, but he was 50-50. He was not 100% helping these, people, these visitors. So we have to look for somebody who we can trust through, through it all. And we have to, you find with our dreams and passion, thinking that, you might think that they were your friends, but you still, you, they'll still make sure your dreams are dead. You just have to be careful on whom to trust, who to take to go into his house. Some of these things we note here in uh, Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 17. Uh, Jeremiah, chapter number 17. Chapter 17, verse 7 and 8. Verse 7 to 8. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the, by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. It leaves, its leaves are always green. It has no worries. In a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. If you trust in the Lord, even if we are in a year of drought, it's drought, serious drought, drought of cash, money, I mean, anything. People are crying. But if you trust in God, the Most High, yours will be, you'll be fulfilled. Your desire, the desires of your hearts, you'll get all the desires of your hearts. Because you trust the Most High God. In Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2, as Isaiah says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. That is if you put your trust in the Most High God. This guy, let's uh, let's jump a little bit. Again, there's one also in uh, James chapter 1. 
the book of James, chapter number 1 and verse 6. James says, But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. So, the mistake you'll notice here that happened with this man was that he was uh, literally, he didn't put his trust, he didn't consult the Holy Spirit. When the servant was telling him, let's lodge here. That's why I said sometimes you'll find unbelievers, they are really helpful than your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And they are so good, they'll take you to the next level. So, you see, our wayfarer, our traveler, put his trust in his brothers and sisters, in his Christian brothers, which was a bit unfortunate. He should have seeked the Most High God first and foremost. So, you find when things get tough, remember you have someone who will come to your aid. Always. This guy, things were tough for him. But he forgot there was somebody who will come for him for his aid when things were tough. That's why you find that all, things, all these things happened. So he went crying, complaining all over Israel, reporting these people, the, their misdeeds. He could have just put everything before the Most High God. In Isaiah chapter number 60, verse 2 to 3, See, darkness covers the earth, and the thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord raises up upon you, his glory appears over you. Verse 3, nations will come to your light, and kings to the, to the brightness of your dawn. All in all, we are being told, put your trust in the Most High God. Look. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 19. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have, I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. At these words, the Jews were again divided. Obviously, people will be divided on why. Why are you talking so holy? Because Jesus was talked so holy, righteous, and the brothers and sisters were divided. But all in all, in all this book message that we've had today, Trust in the Most High God. Before you do, you make any decision. Don't look at if favors are coming and those favors are coming from angles you don't expect. Seek God first for advice. Pray over it and then go for your kill in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. If you are there, you don't know anything about Christ. You want to be part and parcel of the kingdom of the Most High. You've never heard about Jesus Christ. You don't know anything about the Bible, the Holy Bible, the one and only true word of Yeshua. Say this prayer after me. Father, I come before you. I am a sinner. I've sinned against you, against the people around me and the whole world. I want to be a new creature, a new creation. I want to be part and parcel of the kingdom of God. Forgive me of all my sins. I believe and trust that Jesus Christ was persecuted and died on the cross because of my sins. He died for three days. After three days, he rose again and he's seated on your right hand, far, on your right hand side, O Jehovah. I accept Jesus in my life. Forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you say that prayer, Heaven is rejoicing, rejoicing. The angels are happy. The celestial beings in the heavenly are celebrating. Do you know even the stars celebrate? Because 
in in the New Testament. In fact, I think it's in uh, either Corinthians, second uh, first book of Corinthians or Romans, whereby Paul says, each star in the heavenly places has got its own way of rejoicing, praising, giving glory to God. And how many stars do we have? We've got millions of them, and each one has got a unique way of praising God. You don't know what you've just come into if you just accepted Jesus Christ. You'll be surprised. Welcome, brother. Welcome, sister. And Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters out there, each and every one of them. Bless them, protect them, heal them of their sicknesses. Provide. May their tables be full of abundance their wallets let them enjoy the life that you've promised them in jesus mighty name amen and amen okay guys thank you thank you god bless you and see you next time shalom peace